Hi, I was just introduced. My name is Tomek, and I'm senior brand manager at Zalando. I hope you had a nice afternoon. Um, it, it's good to see so many of you here. Uh, today, I wanted to concentrate on, on, on the branding that we do at Zalando and the changes that we had to implement uh, over the last few years. Um, and uh, on the reasons why we've done this. Uh, but without further ado, I wanted to start with a very short video, an overview of the campaigns that we've been doing and the changes that I hope uh, will be quite obvious for you when you see the video. So let's go for the video. from Zalando. Topshop is now available in Switzerland, Finland, the Netherlands, in Clermont, Flolon. Karmish Patenkuschen. Because I'm in love with that. Pre-love. Because I'm in love with that. Do like the yo, far away like hey, or then you can just do like, be creative. Share your style. Share your style. Grootsie, Switzerland. Salut France, salut la France. Hello Europe. Let's see what sexy means to you. Thank you. So I guess, uh, as you've seen from the very beginning, very beginning we, we did a very, uh, very big shift between the, the, the way we've communicated at the very beginning, and I hope that most of you have seen the Scream campaigns that did uh, a very good job for, for this, what they were uh, prepared for. Uh, but today I wanted to really concentrate on this, why did we do sh the shift? Uh, so let's, um, let's start with, it, uh, with, the, with the changes that we as a brand, as Zalando, have observed. So the screen was really, ex uh, really successful for us to launch the brand in all 15 markets. With this campaign, we actually were able to establish the brand as a top of mind or um, top of mind brand for e-commerce and fashion in majority of the markets that we operate. However, in order to meet the business needs and in order to be able to grow further, we've, uh, we realized that it's not only uh, good to be recognizable, we also need to be likable. We need to become a fashion expert for our customers so they can relate to Zalando. So we're more than just known brand, we're known for something. So we as a brand, we need to tell something. So that's one of the reasons. But the main reason was, is a change, uh, was the change in behavior, the change of customer's behavior. And this will be the main topic of today's presentation. So uh, mobile rules the world. That's something what we've all heard for 10 years now. And uh, I think we're all kind of bored of this. But if we had any doubts, well, this is 2005, an in inauguration of the Pope. And this is a picture I took uh, that was taken eight la years later. Um, um, and I think you, you can see some differences here. But if you'd like some numbers, well, this is how it looks, right? This is how much time, how much screen time people are spending in front of the, uh, the mobile phones. 40% in pol polls are spending time on the mobile. If you'd like to see some Zalando context, in 2011, we have 5% five, five of our traffic came from uh, on mobile devices, 59% last year. Well, this is context that we cannot ignore anymore. We really need to adapt our brand communication to meet this. Um, and of course, uh, for over the, last, over the last several years, we've seen major disruptions and major things uh, and innovations that did happen um, over the, in technology mainly, and communication. Um, and those are still 
here with us, and they still have a big implications on the way that we communicate with customers. So we started with really classical display advertising that uh, was working in 2005. But then search followed, content marketing followed, moving images in 2010, and the, the widespread of YouTube. And this time, in 2015, we believe that it's really the development of mobile, because all of us are glued to our phones. On average, every poll is spending three hours in front of the mobile phone every single day. And every person in the UK, on average, takes their mobile phone 221 times every single day. Again, this is something that we as advertisers, as uh, uh, branding experts, we cannot uh, ignore. So the main question really is, what touches people? What is it that we as the brand need to do to really to get, in, get into people's, people's minds and their hearts so they're touched by the brand? And what really will keep an interest of our customers? So um, here's some examples of a completely new language and things that are used by our customers um, and that is putting uh, all the branding communication in a completely new um, context. So a completely new appreciation of the weird. I guess some of you have seen this, uh, those memes with Beyonce. Uh, but then a completely new sense of humor as well we suddenly are starting to, take, uh, to, to have a much bigger distance to this, what we do, and we kind of you know, take a piss of, uh, of other things that are happening in the world. Um, a new speediness of communication, I guess everyone knows Donald Trump and his lovely hairstyle, uh, but also a completely new level of personal exposure, and that's not only the celebrities, that Kendall Jenner, uh, that we know pretty much everything about her life now, because she shares everything on Facebook, but that's followed with, uh, with our customers as well. Everyone is sharing much more on internet, on their social media channels, than they used to. This also follows with a completely new uh, language. Suddenly, it's so easy for us to play with emoticons, with emojis, with GIFs, it's so easy for us to use it. And I guess some of you are laughing because it's so close to you. This is actually what you do every day, right? It's also completely new tools and applications that make it so easy for us to suddenly uh, become artists and really turn our things and our content that we as consumers are producing into a piece of art. Like this or like this. I don't know if you like this one. It's also, also a completely new appreciation of the real. So we used to share the, the, the intimate uh, content with our closest friends and family. Suddenly now, we no longer are afraid of sharing that with, uh, with a wider, wi wider uh, audience. And here you have an example of Michał Żebrowski, who, uh, who just posted uh, his picture from hospital, saying that he won't be able to play uh, on that uh, given day in the theater in Warsaw. So you could ask what actually is different. So what has changed that requires us as brands to adapt the, the way we communicate with the customers? Well, I would summarize that with the four things. That the touch is instant, instant it's real, it's human, and it's empowering. So let, let's take a closer look at this and what did that mean for Zalando and uh, what have we done to embrace those four contexts? So. But before going into that, let's look slightly on a, on a classic advertising and let's look how, how, how really this looks. And these are some examples and screenshots of, uh, from a TV advertising here in Germany. I guess it, uh, it feels slightly different to this. So definitely, if you put the two next to each other, and if you compare the way our co consumers are communicating with themselves, with the brands, and you put that together with this, what the brands are doing, those are two separate words. So how do we want those to work? How do we want to get into people's mind if we're still using this kind of advertising? Well, we needed to change that as Zalando. So um, we needed to respect those, uh, those new four contexts because we as Zalando, we believe that we want to uh, become and sustain our uh, great position in Europe as a, as a really fashion uh, platform. So 
These are the four um, contexts and how we embraced them at Zalando. So instant, all the videos that we're now producing, they need to work within the first three seconds. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense because 47% of all the intera interaction that is happening on the mobile devices happens within the first three seconds. Well, this is an example of our campaign from a couple of years ago. And as you can see, the first mention of a product happened on the 31st second. So of course, now this wouldn't work anymore. Most of us are skipping the ads uh, as soon as possible, uh, after five seconds if possible, right? I can see nodding, so I guess it's all right. Um, so we've decided to actually turn the marketing, the traditional marketing tunnel upside down. And rather than first going for awareness and then creating desire and then action, we said, okay, well, let's, uh, let's put it on, on a uh, other way around. Let's start with action. Let's first convince our consumers to engage with us, to engage with our campaigns that we're doing. So then when they like the campaigns that we have produced for them, they will start to play with it. They will start to engage with it. They will start to have some emotions to our brand. And, and if that's achieved, then we know that if our customers do like what we have put there, they will share it on their social media uh, platforms. They will share it with their friends. And that's exactly what we need. Because the content shared by our friends is so much more trustworthy than the content that, sh that is shared by the brands. And of course, yes, this then follows by the more traditional way of advertising that we do at Zalando. We then, yes, focus on building awareness, but this is, this is the first thing that we always have in mind when we produce new branding campaigns now. Um, and here you have some, um, an example of a, um, of a creative that we have done in October. It was part of a huge campaign. It included out of home, it included print, uh, classical um, online video, television, PR. But this piece of content was the most successful one out of the, everything that we have created. We've uh, managed to engage with 20,000 people within the first 15 minutes of the campaign launch. Realness, that's the second context that we, we said we need to embrace. So really working with the characters and models. Um, if you look at this, well, some pictures of, of the, the currently top models in the world. Um, they're really evaluated on the base of the Instagram followers. And yesterday I was reviewing the presentation for, for, for today, and I've actually checked uh, how much Gigi's uh, Instagram followers have rose. So in October last year, her follower space was 6 million. Now it's, now it's 16.7. So um, if we look at this, and we look at uh, this, what those influencers are sharing, I still remember Cindy Crawford and Naomi Campbell, but I don't remember anything about their personal lives. Now, these top models now are sharing every single thing about their lives. And that's a huge, uh, huge change as well that we as a marketeers need to embrace as well. Um, and that is why in this campaign, uh, which we launched in October, which was called Share Your Style last year, we've decided to work not with models, but with people that are something to say, that they're characters, they're influencers, they do something in their life, they have very strong point of view. So we work with Binks, she's a very popular um, musician. We worked with Noah Becker, we worked with Lucky Bluesmith, we worked with Jean de, Jean de Mas from, uh, from France as well. They're all characters, they have something to say, they're not just models. Um, well, and if you ask me if the campaign did perform well, well, we're very happy with it. After four weeks, we got 1.5 million uh, impressions on the campaign without really supporting it with external media. But I, I guess what's most important in the context of what I said, uh, of what I said before is the 10,000 uploaded uh, pictures onto the campaign. And that's only after the first four weeks of the campaign. This is exactly the interaction that we wanted. And the, f the third, uh, the th the third uh, context that we as Zalando are embracing is to really be a human company. Um, and really playing with spontaneity and uh, not being afraid of making mistakes. Um, and I guess this example will probably best demonstrate how did we embrace that. 
Hi guys, I've got some great news from Zalando. Topshop is now available in uh, in Google go Bovina. Na, 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 na. Basically, Topshop is actually available wherever you are. Brought to you by Zalando. And they give you free shipping in return. Free love. So in this campaign, we've asked uh, a model, Cara de Lavin, to pronounce uh, cities into which Zalando delivers Topshop now. Uh, we've done six local country versions. Um, so uh, we had um, six different spots for every single country um, where she was trying to, to pronounce uh, names like Stettin, München Gladbach. Uh, and of course, it was so funny that it created a lot of user-generated content. People actually started to teach Kara on their own channels how to pronounce their own town, uh, town names. Uh, that was exactly the interaction that we wanted. Um, and the last context that we wanted to really embrace here is to empower, to start the conversations and not dictate the, uh, our point of view. We are not a fashion dictator. We are a fashion platform that is uh, empowering our customers, that is de democratizing fashion and is really interested in this, what our customers have to say about the fashion. And that is why we have now launched the uh, campaign with, Ivy, uh, with Beyonce and with Ivy Park, where... The park is what made me who I am. Every time I have to perform, I go back to that park. Poland, where's your park? We didn't stop here. We went further and we went into micro uh, localized ads and on Facebook. When here we've created 298 formats for Poland, uh, mi micro targeted to different cities that you can see here. And we, uh, we asked people from Piwa what, what was their park. And I guess you can find much more about this campaign on our uh, site. And I uh, encourage you to visit uh, our zalando.pl site um, because I guess th this campaign really summarizes uh, everything what we discussed before. We have really embraced the four uh, new contexts that are so uh, important for us. So to being an instant, real, human, and empowering. But before we go into briefing and uh, new campaigns or launching them, we ask ourselves as a marketeer, as Zalando, one single question. Would I share this? if I saw something like this produced by another brand. Thank you. So much, thank you very much for your presentation. Now it's uh, time for your questions. Um, do me a little favor, just introduce yourself very briefly, who you are, where you're coming from. We're just as curious as, um, as you are. So I see some first raising hands. Hi, my name is Anna. Uh, you showed us the bar chart about the traffic from mobile, uh, but you said about buying from mobile. Could you just give us some data about how many people actually bought something from your mobile, from a mobile device? I can only say that the trend that you've seen on the mobile visits is very similar to the trend that we say we see on the mobile sales. However, we do not uh, disclose the detailed information on the sales. But we, as Zelanda, are very happy with the development, and it's really growing very fast. Hi, I'm uh, Jana from Prague, and uh, I would actually uh, like to ask you, you've defined kind of target group like Age of Touch, but do you have actually like a target group of people? Because when you compare the TV commercials and your commercials, I can see like a slight difference between the, for example, age of the people that are targeting in TV commercials and in yours, which are on social media and so on. Thank you. Well, at Zalando, we are a fashion platform catering for everyone. We have 150,000 products, 1,500 brands. So we also need to uh, include that in our communication. So yes, our core target audience is 25 to 34 women. But of course, this changes on channels. Of course, uh, when we start to create campaigns like Ivy Park, 
with Beyonce, we do have a television spot which we, uh, with which uh, we know we, we will reach the, the mass audience, yes, but then we adapt that into different channels. So we, adapt, we slightly change that uh, one overarching idea to different channels. So the same idea will be played slightly differently on social media. Not even, not even on social media. It will play differently on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, what have you. So, oh yeah, here we go. Hi, my name is Lucas. Um, one question. If you were about to launch a campaign for an underground fashion startup, would you do it exactly the same way you do it as a part of Zalando, or would it be different? I guess uh, here I, um, I showed you how we developed over the years, right? I mean, we have started with a campaign which is completely different. We've started with a scream because we really needed to, to drive brand awareness. So we needed to really demonstrate a very strong point of view of Zalando and some, uh, send a message that is different, that differentiates us on the market. So really started, uh, people started to talk about us. So um, I would say start with this. Really try to, to get a clear message, something what differs you from the competition. Maybe be, be brave. This, this is the advice that I'd, I'd give. Well, if... Oh, there is another question. Yeah, um, I wonder, um, with the communication, um, there, there can go something wrong in the way that... Um, the people are making fun of you, it's kind of a shitstorm could happen or something like this. I'm thinking of something like, uh, I don't know if you know this, uh, with the BVG here, transportation in Berlin, they had a hashtag, uh, because we love you, weil wir dich lieben, and everybody made fun of it and, and posted why they don't love uh, BVG, the public transportation here. Um, have you experienced something like this? And uh, if, if not, um, how would you deal with it? Uh, if it were, do you have plans for, for those things to happen? Sure. Uh, well, we didn't experience something like that, but we're prepared. And I think those four contexts are really much saying a lot about that. We, as a company, we want to be instant, real, human, and empowering. So we're not afraid of people taking a piss of us, uh, of uh, you know, making laugh uh, out of Zalando if we make a mistake. At the end of the day, we all make mistakes, and if that's what happens at Zalando, well, it happens. Then we will face it. We will definitely not try to, you know, cover up. Uh, we have a team uh, in-house that is really uh, there for those issues. So far, they were not that busy because we didn't have any of those. Uh, thank you for the presentation, Oleg from SoftCube. Uh, you said that you prepared a different kind of content for hyperlocal, uh, for TV. For How did you manage it? How many people are working on that? It's uh, so huge amount of work. How you prepare it, how you store it about production. How did you do it? Thank you. Sure, so uh, a couple of years ago we've decided in Zalando that we are no longer want to work with external advertising agencies and we've decided to take it all in-house. So right now we have our internal creative agency at Zalando that is responsible for producing all of that content. The team is growing. Uh, it's uh, every, every day is bigger. I think uh, every two weeks when we have new uh, new starters coming to Zalando, most of them are coming to the brand department. So we're the most uh, um, you know growing uh, department. But yes, it's it's a complicated uh, process. But um, having 15 country teams uh, sitting together with the global teams here in Berlin uh, helps us in information flow and in really putting it uh, together so it's uh, relevant for every single country, but it's also uh, relevant for, for the global um, part of uh, communication as well. So if there are no further questions from the audience, maybe you have a question to the audience. No, thank you. Uh, I'll be here around, so if you have any further questions, feel free to grab me and I will be more than happy to answer any further questions. But otherwise, thank you very much. It was a real pleasure to be here in front of you and uh, have a nice afternoon.